Okay. We always are. Uh, excuse me. The ice coming in the yard, Lord Hada. I was trying to just fly. We are. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Crosswinds, everybody. We're going to have a great time today. You know, I was just kind of walking through our parking lot, knowing what I was going to talk about, and something dawned on me. You know what? Everything we do takes faith. Everything. We're talking about God can, and if you're going to believe that God can do anything, it takes faith. But I, I, I want to take a different road today, a different slant. So before we go any farther... Stay tuned if you want to hear more. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would anoint every person that's watching right now. Anoint them in their family. Anoint them in their personal life. Bring healing into their life mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, financially, emotionally, and relationally. Just touch them. May they be encouraged today. May the word of God speak to them in a powerful way. And bless us, Lord, as we bring your holy word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything takes faith. Now, if you are in America, you're in a capitalist system. And I know that's kind of a bad word some now, sometimes, but I, I believe in capitalism. That's who we are. What I mean is anybody starting a business must believe that you can make money, that you can make it. It takes faith to believe that you can make it. If we go to the voting booth, here in America, we believe that our vote will be counted. And we believe that whoever gets the most electoral votes wins in a presidential election or other elections, whoever gets the most votes. It takes faith to believe that your vote counts. Do you know what? When you get up in the morning and you jump in your car, it takes faith for you to believe in the back of your mind that your car will start. You know how I know that? Because the first time the car doesn't start, it freaks us out. Because we just had this faith. Or you go in there and you look and you see you got a flat tire. What? We just figured the tires would all be aired up. You see, everything takes faith. Now, if you're working for somebody, you believe that they're going to take your payroll taxes and send it to the government. You got faith in them. You believe that when you go cash your check or it will be deposited into your account electronically right on time. See, it takes faith. When I married my wife, she married me. It took faith. We said, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, as long as we both shall live. That takes faith. You see, everything takes faith. Sometimes we just narrow it down like this and believe that, you know, only in God. No, everything takes faith. To believe that God can takes faith. We're in this series that God can and I can't. And last week we started this take a journey. Let's take a journey. For you to successfully take a journey in Christ and to accomplish great things and to be the person God wants you to be and God ordained for you to be, it takes faith. But if you've got it, you'll want to take the journey because at the end of the journey, there is exceedingly abundant great moments that God has set aside for all of us. You see, here's some scriptures we want to deal with today. Psalms 5.12 says, Surely the Lord will bless the righteous, and you surround them with your favor as a shield. If you are in Christ, you're a righteous person, and God surrounds you with a shield. The Lord God is a shield about you. He's the glory and the lifter of your head. The second verse goes like this in Romans 3.22. This righteousness, the righteousness that you and I have, is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So when the Bible says that the Lord surrounds the righteous, if you've given your heart to Jesus, believed that he is the Messiah, then you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Last week, we began the journey through the journey, 
and there were four points we want to go over. Now, if you missed last week, I urge you to go back and plug in and really listen to this sermon because I believe the journey of faith is the greatest journey that any human being can take. So number one, we said faith is a substance. It's not some pie in the sky little mist. It's a literal substance. It is real. Two, everyone who accepted Christ has the seed of faith. And incidentally, all the uh, points that we're going to make this week and last week, we had our scriptures tied to them, so I'm not going to go through those. But you can check into last week's sermon and you can catch them all. So everyone, if you gave your heart to Jesus, the Bible says the Lord put within you the seed of faith. It is a substance. It's a seed. The third thing is that we can grow our faith. God leaves it up to you and to me to grow our faith, to water it, to make sure that it is growing and producing great abundance. And finally, we learned that you can add to your faith. Not only does it, 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 are you, excuse me, not only do you have this portion of faith inside of you that can grow, but you can add things to it. And, and we talked about adding goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and to brotherly kindness and to many things, but you can add to it. And so we're going to start out with number five. On your journey, we please God with faith. Now, we've been over this scripture numerous times in the last six weeks, but I want to say it again. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists and he rewards those, and I'm adding this part, who diligently, passionately, purposely seek him. You please God with faith. When we please God, our prayers seem to be different. Our actions seem to be different because we want to please the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to please the God who created us. Incidentally, I had a wonderful man that came up after one of our services last week here at Crosswinds, and he said, Pastor, you talk about desires. Shouldn't we just push down our desires? And I said, no, listen to this. It said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, everybody, let's plug in, plug in, plug in. I believe that as we please God with our faith, that our desires become godly desires. If I am outside the realm of God or maybe I put, I've wandered away from the Lord, then my desires become worldly. And yes, uh, I mean, they, they become anti-God almost. But God wants to give you the desires of your heart. So understand that you need to please God by having great faith. Now, number six, faith without works is dead. James 2, 17. Faith without works is dead. A lot of people go around, and, and I see it, and you do too, maybe on television or you'll see it on a social media page or something you're watching on YouTube. Or, I mean, there's so many ways to watch things now. Who knows? You're on Snapchat or whatever. Uh, I, I was watching some stuff on TikTok actually the other day. You can watch on any things. But let me tell you what. Faith is like watching stuff. You just get it inside of you. But until it comes out of you, you don't really know if you have it or not. You can get it in you. But when it comes out of you, that's when faith is real. See, faith without works is dead. Everybody watching on TikTok, watching on television, watching on YouTube, stuff I said. There's always people saying, well, I'm a Christian, I got faith. But let me ask you, I know that you've got faith, but is your faith alive? Is it doing something? Is it producing some fruit? Is it, is it motivating you? Does it help you get up in the morning and say, man, this is gonna be a great day. Great things are gonna happen because if God is for me, who's gonna be against me? And to go out expecting, believing, and acting on that faith. That's when you know that you've got real faith because if not, faith without works is dead. All right, here we go. Seven, we walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says it like this. We walk by faith and not by sight. If we watch, uh, don't watch out, we get into this habit of needing to see it, needing to believe it. I, I believe it by seeing it or um, you know, you show me how it's done, then I'll do it. But there are times when we can't walk like that. We need to just walk believing that God said. I found this, that many times the Lord wants to work through me. And if I sit and wait around 
for somebody to show me or if I sit and wait around to see some sign. A lot of times maybe you will ask God for a sign. God, show me this and if this happens, I'll believe or I'll walk by this if you'll open this door. No, there are times when you just need to take that step of faith. You need to step out of the boat. We have a tendency to want signs. I mean, you know, instead of walking by faith, we're looking for signs, looking for somebody to show us something. Sometimes we say, God, if you'll do this, then I'll do that. If, if you will open this door, then I'll walk through the door. But there are times that we need to just walk by faith and not by sight. We're always looking for somebody to give us a hand, but that's not the way the Lord works. Not when you're on your journey. Oh, there are many times that doors open, etc. but when you're on the journey, you've got to walk by faith. I'm reminded of Peter, one of the disciples, and they were all in a boat and they were going across this lake and it was a stormy day and the storm was rolling and here comes Jesus. They had left without him and he came walking upon the water and Peter cried out and he said, Lord, if it's you, let me come. And the rest of the disciples were scared to death. But here's what we know. The story tells us that Jesus didn't walk over to the border, excuse me, didn't walk over to the boat and take his hand and lift him up and carry him through. The disciples didn't lift him up over the boat. There was nothing Peter could do. Jesus just said, come on. And Peter had to step out of that boat himself and he had to put his foot down on that water by himself and begin to walk. What? He walked by faith and not by sight. Now, some of you might know the story and you'll say this, well, yeah, but Peter began to sink for a while. You know, I never look at it like he began to sink after a while. I say, how many steps did that guy make? If he made five steps, whoo, that was something. It doesn't matter. When he began to sink, then he looked up and he said, Lord, save me. And then the Lord grabbed his hand. And you say, well, why didn't he wait till the Lord get his hand before he walked? No, no, because now through all eternity, Peter can say, I walked what well, the rest of you do. See, we walk by faith, as I said, and not by sight. That is how we please the Lord. And the final one, number eight, is faith is one of the 12 gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 outlines nine different gifts. And I'll, I'll give them for you. I'll give them to you. Wisdom, knowledge, faith. We'll come back to it. Healings and miracles, discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, the prophetic word. Well, the third one is faith. And they're not in, in, in an order. It's not like wisdom is more important than knowledge and knowledge more important than faith. No, in the writer, Paul, he just was writing them down and, and, and that's the way he put it. So faith, it is a gift of God. The fact that the Lord put the seed of faith in you and me, it's a gift. It's a gift that in my critical moment here, I would tell you that it's a gift that most people in Christ have refused to open. Hear me. I didn't say didn't want to open. I, I think everybody wants to open the gift of faith, that seed of faith. But then again, actions speak louder than words. You've got to want it. You've got to want to do something about it. Remember a couple of points ago, faith without works is dead. But see, it's a gift of God. God calls it a gift. I'm giving you a precious gift. Now, as we walk on this journey, I want to still stay on this point, but if we walk on this journey, I want you to know that gifts are given to be open and used. Gifts are not given to be stuck and hidden. God wants you to open the gift. Now, the thing about the gift of faith is when you open it, it can expand to any size that you want. It's as big as you will allow it to grow. We talked about that last week, incidentally, that you can add to your faith, that you can grow your faith, that you can water your faith. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit. So listen, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Everybody right now on the camera, if you'll just say this to me, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. All right, let's say it together. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, surely the Lord blesses the righteous. He surrounds us with his favor as a shield. Now, three things about righteousness so you can just get into your head. 
It is not earned, it is exchanged. You can't earn your righteousness. Some people say, well, I can't go to church till I get my head right. I can't, I'm not going to go to heaven unless I do this or do that. God will never forgive me unless I do that. No, no, no. Righteousness is not earned, it's exchanged. When you come to the Lord, you give him your unrighteousness. He takes your sin and puts it on his back, which he took it upon himself on the cross. And he gives you the righteousness of God. It's exchanged. You can't buy it. It's paid for. It's already done. You don't buy it. It's paid for. You can't earn it. You can't pay money for it. You can't work it. You can't sit like a monk somewhere and, and disappear for years on end in meditation. Uh-uh. It's already bought. Jesus bought your righteousness, like I just said, upon the cross. Upon the cross of Calvary when he gave his life. He paid for your righteousness. And let me finally say, it's not temporary. It is eternal. It's not something that runs out. It's not like your faith just disappeared. It's not like you're on the journey of God and somebody somehow faith leaves you. Somehow your righteousness leaves you. No. That is why God can and we can, but only through the journey with Christ. So let me sum it up. Every person watching and listening to this has been destined for a journey. When you were thought of, created by your mom and dad, when, when you were brought into this world, God ordained you to go on a journey. And as I often say, and maybe you're going to be watching and saying, boy, Pastor Pete, that's some bold statements, but I believe every statement I'm saying right now that the journey of God is bigger than you and I are doing right now, are going on right now. God has a big journey. Maybe you're watching and you just kind of been floating around and going here and doing this and you're thinking, boy, my life hasn't been too exciting. And let me tell you something. You go on the journey with the Lord and your life will be full of excitement. God will bring you farther than you ever thought you could go and he will bring you higher than you ever thought you could climb. He will put you into places you never thought imaginable. I can take to this the bank. I can guarantee it, not because of me, but because of him. Because he has said this. I've said it many times, but let me give you another scripture. Once again, I has not seen. You have not seen. Ear has not heard. You have not heard. Nor your mind or my mind can conceive the great things that God has for those who love him. And may I add, who decide, you make a decision, to go on the journey with him. That's why God can, we can, but only through the journey with Christ. I challenge you. Let's do something big. Let's do something so great. I haven't said this for a while in my sermons, but I've said it for many, many years. Think of something so big that if God's not in it, it'll fail. Now that's bold. If you're watching right now and you don't have Jesus in your heart, you might say to me, Pastor Pete, how can I tell if I have Christ or not? Here's my easy question. If you die tonight, do you know if you're going to go to heaven or hell? If you can't say, I'm going to heaven, then this is for you. What I'd like you to do, I mean, there's something going on inside. I can just see it. I can see it in my spiritual eye. What I'd like you to do is right now at, at whatever medium you're looking at, maybe you're on YouTube, let's just use that, but you could be watching on anything else. Just blink right at the YouTube place. Just blink at the YouTube on your TV. And that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus. And if you've blinked, I'm going to say a prayer and I'd like you to repeat it after me. Now, if you're with somebody, maybe you feel embarrassed, that's okay. Just say it in your heart. Say it in your mind. God can still hear. But if you're by yourself, I think it'd just be beneficial if you say it out loud. So let's repeat it right now, asking Jesus to come into your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sin. I believe you died for me and I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you in Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, if you 
said that prayer in your mind or your heart, click on the link attached to this video, this broadcast, and just follow the instructions and we'll get you started on what it means to be walk the great journey with the Lord. I also want to say that if this has touched you, maybe both of these parts, uh, two parts of the series has touched you, share it. If you're on Facebook right now, press, press share. Everybody that's connected to you will now have the access to this, uh, this word from the Lord. Or wherever you're at, share it with somebody. Invite somebody. I think you'll be glad you did and they will be glad also. Well, finally, we have a quick video for you. There's something that we have done for many years and that is uh, we have urged people to get out of debt, urged people to take the journey of debt reduction. And we offer free membership into Ramsey Plus and it's worth 120, 130 bucks, I believe, and it's free to you. But before we go any farther about that, watch this video right now. Hey, if that presentation touched you, click on the link attached to this video. It'll bring you right to Ramsey Plus. Get connected through Crosswinds. You're gonna be glad you did. We're so grateful for those that are great givers and big givers, and if you're not part of our giving team, I urge you to become part of our team because we're doing great things in our community. Uh, so there's many ways to give. It's on your uh, screen right now. You can go online, text to give, mobile, in service. Text to give is the easiest way. So I want to thank you so much. God has blessed us in a powerful way. One of the things that we like to do at the end of all of our services and all of our online presentations for myself is I like to talk about me how God talks about me. That's part of our journey. So let's say it together. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. Be blessed. Let's get on the journey.